sorry about that. Sometimes I get a little carried away with my cinematic intros. So that's what we're talking about this week. Cinematic intros. Really quick side note before we get into it. I struck up a deal with the city and I've now got, wait for it, my very own private production studio. We got microphones, we got headphones, we got all the equipment, we've got a soundproof room. I mean, this is pretty damn cool. Welcome back to the YouTube channel, everybody. Today we're talking about cinematic intros. And before we get into the technicalities behind it, I think it's very important to think about why you want a cinematic intro. And in the world of digital marketing, the number seven goes around quite a bit. People say you got seven seconds to grab someone's attention. You have seven interactions before they're even going to remember you. There's seven touch points before someone will buy from you. Anyway, online seven seems to be a number that everyone keeps talking about. So when you think about it, if you've only got seven seconds to grab someone's attention, images and video are going to be the things that will really draw them in. And a great way of grabbing someone's attention very, very quickly is if you do something cinematic or something funny or something humorous or something shows that you're humble. And today we're going to speak very quickly about how to create a cinematic intro like the one I just showed you. So just to give you a small bit of insight, this is what the video looks like shot right out of camera. You can see that it's actually pretty damn boring. There's nothing going on. It's me walking around with a camera in my hand while it looks like under a bridge and there's stony pathway. It's not interesting whatsoever. But once you bring it into the editing room and you start playing around with music and frame rates and reverse and speed up and special effects, you can make it a bit more cinematic. So this is actually gonna be a two part series. Even though I do like the number three, this one's gonna be broken down into two. And the first part, we're gonna speak about frame rates. So what do you need to know about frame rates? Basically, as you're recording video, the camera is capable of recording so many frames per second. And it's marked down as FPS, frames per second. And what you're watching right now is what you'll actually see in Hollywood most of the time, and that's 24 frames per second. So for every single second of recording, there's 24 frames being caught in the camera, which is creating the video. Now, you can change that on your DSLR, you can change it on your smartphone, you can change it on pretty much any camera you get your hands on. So why would you want to pay attention to frame rates? It really comes down to what you're trying to shoot. If you're just shooting yourself, talking to the camera like I am now, you can use the good old fashioned Hollywood 24 frames per second and it looks pretty damn good. But if you were doing sports or you're doing action or you're doing something that you might want to slow down later on, well then you have to start upping your frame rates because if you leave them low, it looks a little bit choppy. Like this scene. So what you just saw there was 24 frames per second slow down. It's very, very choppy. It doesn't look good. No one wants to see it. However, when you compare that to this, That was shot at 60 frames per second and then slowed down to 24 frames per second. And I believe the technical term is buttery, silky smooth. So that's what you're looking for. You want buttery, silky smooth footage. Now that you've figured out that you can increase and decrease the frame rate on your camera, that's gonna give you a more Hollywood cinematic look or something that you want for sports and action. Well, you can bring that into the software room and then start speeding it up and slowing it down and going reverse and going back and forth. And that's what I did in this particular video. As you can see from the initial footage, it's me just walking around with a camera, but when you slow it down and you add some music and some sound effects, it looks a little more cinematic and it looks extra appealing for your viewer. So if you were to do that at 24 frames per second, it just wouldn't look as smooth because the slow motion looked very choppy. But if it's a real life situation like me talking to the camera right now, if you remain at 24 frames per second, well, you're really gonna get that very, very Hollywood cinematic look. So that's a little bit about frame rates. 
why you should care and once you start playing around with them you'll see if your video looks a little more cinematic Hollywood or do you want it to look really really slick and smooth where you can get very creative with it in the editing room. So a bit of homework for you this week is go into your camera whether it's on your smartphone or your DSLR and check out what frame rate it's currently at. Right out of the packaging most cameras are at 24 frames per second which is what you're used to seeing in Hollywood and it's very similar to what your eyes pick up on day to day. You do have the option to increase that to 60 frames per second and you will notice straight away that the footage on your camera just looks, looks a little bit smoother whenever you're tracking some sort of movement. Now there are some phones like some of the new iPhones and Samsungs that go up to 120 frames per second which will be extra buttery silky smooth and then other cameras that are pretty expensive can go up to 240 frames per second and there's even cameras that go up to 1000 frames per second. I don't own one of those, but maybe one day, maybe one day, because they cost a lot of money. Now, the next part of the series, something that you definitely want to pay attention to when you're starting to edit video is using music. And once you start editing to a beat and how you can really incorporate that into what you're trying to achieve with the footage, well, you're actually going to really draw your viewer in a lot more. So if they can see it and then they can hear it, then they'll begin to expect something and then it's much more appealing to your viewer that you can incorporate good music mixing with amazing visuals. So that's all for me this week, folks. We talked about frame rates and why you should care. Next week, we're going to talk about music. And once you start incorporating music into your editing footage it's going to look very very cinematic and it's much more appealing for your audience to see music and video mixed together. I know personally that once I started mastering how to put music and video together that I got a lot more people interested in the footage that I'm creating and matching video to audio is an art in itself and it's something that I'm working a lot on and it takes a lot of time so what we're going to speak about next time is where you can find the audio some of the good sites where you can license audio from and once you do have the audio that you want what are the things you want to do with your footage to really draw that viewer in and make sure that you're creating really good video that's all for me this week folks thanks very much for tuning in if you're into it please do subscribe to the channel i want to update this channel at least on a weekly basis so that my video skills get better every single time i put out an edit if you follow along your skills with the camera are going to improve so please do subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next episode